Hey everybody, what's up? I hope you're doing well so far today, and welcome to this week's episode. In this video, I'll be going over how we can use the Mastermind GT to control your DAW. Whether it be Studio One, Ableton, Logic, or Pro Tools, we can actually set many instant action buttons in this device to control many, many different settings and buttons and switches within a DAW. And I'm talking about not only the usual buttons like play, stop, and record, but even some of the more obscure buttons as simple as like hitting undo and redo, or arming and muting a track. The list goes on and on. Now you might say, well, in a world where we have access to stuff like fader ports and some other outboard control surfaces, why would we want to use the Mastermind GT to do this? I would say that it actually comes in handy if you're someone who is a recording artist, perhaps tracking an instrument in the studio without a recording engineer present to man the computer. One thing that I do quite often is that I'll run some takes on piano and I'll be quite a distance away from the computer. What I'll have is a couple of pages in the GT that have instant access buttons that are dedicated to handling certain functions that I find myself most commonly using in the event of tracking. So what would those buttons be? Well, usually if I do a take and I make a mistake, I'll want to undo that, perhaps cut that track out, and go back to the position I was in. I can program instant action buttons to do each of those things. And that's really great in my opinion, because I don't have to worry about getting up from my piano, walking over to the computer and getting rid of something, then heading back to the piano, repositioning myself, and not to mention that you need a way to even hit record. So in my opinion, if we can have piano keyboards with MIDI capability doing some of these very similar functions, then why not have the ability to use a device like this where you can be with either just a pure analog or an acoustic instrument and still have your DAW's controls right at your feet. So I'd like to proceed with this video by showing you exactly how I'm setting up the GT with my DAW, what kind of settings I'm giving to the buttons, and how exactly I'm mapping these buttons to my DAW session. So if you've been keeping up with all my videos about the Mastermind GT, this very first step is going to look super familiar to you. However, if this is your first time seeing one of my videos about this device, firstly, welcome to the community. Secondly, what we do here is we need to establish a MIDI connection between the Mastermind and our DAW. So to do that, we need to register the DAW as a device within the GT. So let's go ahead and open up our main menu. We'll select Edit Devices, choose an empty slot, hit Type. So the thing about RJM is that for tons of devices across many manufacturers, they have many pre-programmed settings for different devices, which is great. However, a DAW is not something that we're going to find. But that's okay, not necessary, because you're gonna find that a DAW is super easy to set up. So let's just go ahead and hit generic, PC and CC device. Let's go ahead and give our device a name. We'll just simply call it DAW. Okay, cool. You may set your MIDI channel to whatever works best for you. I like to put mine on 11 so it doesn't clash with any of the other devices in my many rigs that I have going on here. Let's change our port to USB. We don't need the MIDI app for this. In fact, connectivity for this is super simple, I should mention. All we really need is a USB cable with a Type B connector from, to a Type A, connecting from your Mastermind GT back to your computer, respectively. So moving on. Pretty much every single setting that we have can stay the same. We might just want to move the bank type to MSB and LSB. Otherwise, we are good to go. We can exit out of the main menu now. So the next thing we'll do is we'll hop on the Mastermind GT Editor and we're going to have a look at some of the settings I have in place, what kind of buttons we have, and the actions that we have with them. 
So let's begin by going over some of the buttons that I have laid out in the GT. Here we are on our buttons tab. So I have two pages going on here. Page number one has my most commonly used functions such as uh, play, stop, and record, which are all considered transport functions in DAWs. And then to the left over here, we have mute, solo, and arm, and monitor, and these are all for tracks. So with the press of these buttons, I can mute or solo out certain channels, and I can arm or disarm a channel for recording, and sometimes I may not want to have the monitor being on in the speaker, so I can go ahead and get rid of that or turn it on. On the upper right, we have channel up and channel down. These are toggle switches. These allow me to switch between different channels over and over, depending on what I'd like to work with in the session. Now, if we hit page up, we can go on to page two. As you can see, play, stop, and record have shown up again. That's because if we were to look at the buttons, we'll see that I have them checked off as a global button. When you do that, you can have the same button reappear on every single page that you're using in your settings. So if we exit out of this, we'll have a look at the three new buttons that you see appear. We have redo and undo, which of course is for whenever you want to undo a, maybe a take that you just did, you can hit that, or redo to get it back. Or perhaps if you hit the undo button and you just want to get rid of the take, I have a button to cut. So these are buttons that you can pretty much find on any session or, you know, like a Word or Excel document, anything we do with the computer. These are just simple edit buttons. We have the power to MIDI map them and use them with an external controller like the Mastermind. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at one of these buttons and see what our action settings are like. Let's go back to page one and have a look at mute. So needless to say, all of these buttons are instant access, so we would choose the IA for button type. All IA settings can be left unchecked. There's really nothing specific that we need. I like to have the color of these buttons corresponding with how they would appear in a DOS, so naturally the mute button will be red. For each of these buttons, we pretty much just need one action, and each time, that'll call for an action type being CC momentary. The device that we initialized to be run as our DAW is the only device that is in this file settings for the GT. So very hard to confuse that for anything else. Then what I did is I chose to work between numbers 75 to 90. Honestly, for no particular reason, I just happened to be thinking of those numbers when I was setting this whole thing up one day recently, so I chose number 79 as my CC number. Now, if we were to exit out of this, we would see that all of these buttons are very, very similar to each other. The only difference is not only just their name and color, but the CC number that I have designated for this certain function. Let's have a look at something like play, stop, and record. One thing that is a little bit different with these buttons as opposed to the rest of them is that they are assigned to a group. If we have a look at the IA settings, you'll see that I have them under group one. Same with the stop button, as well as the record button. The reason why I chose to do this is because Let's say that we're in the middle of, you know, just doing some basic playback in a song or we're going to record and stop whenever. This allows us to look at our GT to see that only one of these buttons is active at once. So let's say that we hit the play button. That'll be the only button on our GT that has a light indicating that it is in the on position. However, if we want to stop the playback of the track, we can go ahead and hit the stop button we'll lose the light from the play button and now the stop button will be lit. Same as the record button. So I figured those would be three good buttons to have grouped together. The only other time we'll see that in these settings is with the channel buttons. I assigned those to group two, pretty much for similar reasons. As we're toggling from channel to channel, it would be nice to see which uh, button is being used, but that won't really matter anyway, the device is at your feet, so you're not necessarily going to see the channel up and down being uh, lit one by one, but still, it's uh, a good thing to have. Groups are good. Now the only other time I have another group of buttons is with the channel up and down buttons. These two buttons are assigned to group two, 
so that way they cannot interfere with the first group of buttons going on. In addition to that, since channel up and down are toggle switches, it's nice to have them in their own group, so that way either button will be lit depending on which way we're toggling on channels in our console section in the DAW. So that's pretty much all that's going on here. Before we head over to the DAW to minimap these buttons, I'll show you a few tricks to kind of keep things organized in the GT here. So let's head on over to the global tab and let's have a look at system settings. So since we're only working with two pages in this file, I'll just leave the max button page at two. For the most part, that's all you really need to worry about. But now here's a little trick that I decided to use on my own terms. The kind of settings that we're using with the mastermind, they don't involve any presets or any kind of effects changes. So sometimes what can happen is when you're just using different buttons in the GT, sometimes your display screen might read different preset numbers which is a little weird, so if you're a guy like me who is very meticulous and proud of that, you might want to have it saying a certain thing on the main display screen the whole time, such as DAW controller. So here's what I did. If we go over to the presets tab, I have everything blacked out except for preset number one. I just have it saying DAW controller. Go over to the songs tab, make it a song, just type the same thing in song number one and go ahead and select it from the available presets and then go to the set list tab and again you can just literally copy and paste this title to the name of the set list and now what we can do is go back to global and on display settings click on show only song name and then with current set list up in the system settings just select the set list that you had so now when you go to use your GT as a DAW controller, you'll never have to worry about it saying anything weird because you have it officially locked in saying DAW controller at all times. And it's impossible for anything to be toggled to any other presets of any kind because there are no bank up or preset buttons, so nothing to worry about here. If you're not able to access it, the GT cannot access it either. All right, so now that we have that squared away, let's go on and head into a DAW session and let's minimap some of these buttons. So that way we can use our GT as a controller now. Okay, so here we are in Studio One, which is my DAW of choice as a creative. The chances are that you're probably not using the same DAW as I am, but that's okay because once I go through the settings and you see how this works, the chances are it won't be that hard for you to figure it out on your end. But if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I can give you a hand if needed. In my experience, once you figure out how to do one thing in one program, it's very easy to figure out how to do it in another. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to MIDI mapping. If you haven't already, we will need to register the Mastermind GT as an external device to your DAW. So in Studio One, we can do that in the middle of a session by hitting Song, Song Setup, Preferences on the lower left, and we'll hit the Add button. We're going to be adding this as a new control surface. We can set the manufacturer to RJM Music Technology. And we will call this device MMGT10-Remote. The only thing you have to worry about now is just uh, entering the Mastermind GT output to input in both fields respectively. Don't worry about these pop-ups that you see here about uh, this already being in use. That's because I already have my Mastermind GT registered in my DAW. I just decided to do this from scratch so you can uh, just see clearly how this works. So I will hit cancel, but you will hit the OK button. So now that we have that taken care of, let's go ahead and map our buttons. We can pull up the window for MIDI mapping by hitting the caps lock button. This allows us to program any outboard MIDI device with any uh, keys or functions it might have, or faders and knobs if you're using like a, an Akai keyboard. So anyway, we'll select the controller for Mastermind GT10. So right now this window is showing all of the MIDI map buttons. However, I decided to delete a few of them so I can give you an example of what this looks like when we set it up. So if you were following the law before when we set up our instant access buttons and if you entered any CC numbers, 
then this is going to be a very quick process for you. Here's all you have to do. All you got to do is select MIDI Learn and just go ahead and literally press the buttons that you would like to map in. So in this case, I'll be hitting play, stop, and record. The first thing that you'll notice is, is that you're seeing three knobs instead of the uh, squares that you have here. But then the next thing you'll notice is that you have the CC numbers below indicating that these are the instant access buttons with the same CC codes that we assigned to them. So instead of having these as a knob or a fader, we need to turn these three map buttons into a press and release button. Let's do that by right clicking and we'll select button and press release for all three of them. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and assign the actual commands. We'll do this by right clicking the square, hit assign command and the window will pop up and this is a list of every single command that Studio One has the ability to minimap. I wasn't kidding when I said there was a lot of stuff earlier. So anyway, let's go ahead and type in start. This is for the play button. So it'll be under the transport category. And right here is start. CC87 will be for the stop. So we'll go ahead and type that in. Again, under transport. CC number 88 will be for the record. So let's go ahead and find that. And once again, that is under the transport category. Great, we have everything here. So let's X out of this now, and let's see what we can do here. All right, so we're, we're within our session. We can go ahead and hit the play button. Well, there you go. We are up and running. We can hit the stop button, and the cursor will stop moving. But what we can also do is we can hit the stop button again, and it'll go back to the very first measure of the song. I'm going to manually move the cursor over here so I don't mess up the recording I did. But let's say that we want to get to the channel that says piano. Let's go ahead and hit channel down. We're right there. Oh, firstly, let's actually disarm this MIDI track here. Uh, let's just hit the arm button to get rid of that so there's nothing weird going on. Uh, let's hit channel down back to piano again. Let's arm this track. I'll turn the monitor off because I don't need it right now. We can go ahead and hit the record button. Now we can record. Awesome, let's stop there. So we have a take just sitting here with nothing going on. Let's get rid of it. Let's hit page up. We can either hit undo and it'll go away. Or maybe if we made a mistake and we want to get it back, let's hit redo. Or let's say for instance, we just want to delete it outright. Let's hit the cut button. Now it's gone. Awesome. And the nice thing about that second page having play, stop, and record as global buttons is that if I'm ever in the middle of just deciding if I want to keep a track or not, I can just hit the play button and review that take and, you know, stop and go back at will and just hit cut or redo whenever I need to. So there you have it. Alright guys, so we're going to wrap it up here on this video today. I want to thank you all for watching, and if you liked what you saw, please go ahead and like this video, and be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with future videos that I have coming up. And if you have any questions or suggestions about the Mastermind, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video.